had a ton of requests for crafting tips and tricks. So we are going to go through in detail how we construct a simple doll room. We have been making a lot of doll rooms in cereal boxes mainly because of space. We used to make them in 14 by 14 inch boxes, but uh, after a while, you can only fit so many on a shelf. So we had to find a way to condense it so we can keep creating without having to um, take over the entire house. Hey mom, look at what I just made. Isn't it great? Yes, it's lovely. I'm so glad you like it, mom, because I have to leave it right here. I ran out of space in my bedroom. What? Yeah, so I'm thinking that might not go over too well with the rest of the family, so zero box it is. Right now, my favorite box to use is a Cheerio box because it is taller than the dolls and the sides are pretty wide, measuring a little under three inches. Of course, you can always cut and glue boxes together to get the height that you need. So my first tip is going to be use what you've got. If you don't have a large enough cereal box, you can always glue together smaller boxes um, by overlapping them to get the size that you need. So let's cut it open and get started. Oh yeah, tip number two. I always have, at, very, at the very least, two pairs of scissors. One for cutting like cardboard and paper, and then the other for cutting fabric. I never use my fabric scissors on cardboard and paper, uh, just because I need them really sharp to make my cuts really nice and neat. So if you start using the same scissors for everything, after a while they'll get all dull and they will not cut fabric. So, yeah unless you like sharpening scissors, which I don't, so I just keep two pairs of scissors for different things. When cutting paperboard or cardboard, I like to use scissors with an offset handle. This will allow me to, uh, which side do I wanna open? I wanna open this side. So this will allow me to just go down the edge without getting my fingers caught on the cardboard or getting a paper cut, because that is just awful. If I make a mistake while cutting the paperboard, it's okay because when we cover it with paper, we'll be able to just glue it right back in place. I remove the top tabs because personally, I am not a fan of ceilings. They create shadow and since we use our doll rooms for photography and for making little videos, we don't want the shadow. So I get rid of them to keep my videos and my photos nice and bright. So now we have the beginning of a zero box room. And I love the little corner here. This is always one of my favorite parts because it adds so much dimension to the little doll space and it helps it to stand up. So we need a window, which you could just cut right out of the center here, but we're gonna just add it onto the side. I love having an extended wall because it just gives you so much more space to play. Using some recycled cardboard, I cut off the tabs using those angled scissors. I trace one side of the box onto the cardboard so I can get the exact size that I want. Use a ruler to draw the window. For me, rulers are an absolute necessity. I use them for every single project and they just really help to make my lines nice and neat which helps to make my project nice and neat. So when I'm making my window, I want it to hit right at the doll's hip so that's at about five and a half inches. I just make a little line there and then I'm gonna scoot over and just make five and a half inches here, five and a half inches there, five and a half inches again, five and a half inches again. All right, get rid of Sophie. And now we pretty much just connect the dots. There we go. And draw straight across. Now I draw the sides of the windows. And I just use the ruler itself as the measuring tool to make sure I get it even on both sides. Then across the top. Now let's cut this out. And I cut cardboard two different ways. Sometimes I use those scissors and I just cut on the lines drawn. Take your time so that you don't accidentally go off your line. However, cutting cardboard with scissors can leave the edges a little jagged. And sometimes it squishes the corners of the cardboard so it doesn't look quite, doesn't look quite as crisp. And how are you supposed to cut out that window? Well, one way you can do it is to make a small cut on the side so that you can remove a center piece and then use a piece of paper where you put some glue on it and use it as like a band-aid to cover the, the small cut. Another way to go is to use an X-Acto knife. X-Acto knives are crazy sharp, so you have to have adult supervision or even have an adult do it for you so that you do not accidentally 
injure yourself while trying to craft. And you need a protective surface so you don't end up carving up the furniture. Oops! When using the X-Acto knife, I like to saw a path first. So I just kind of go through really slowly down my lines. And this will just give me a good path to go on later. Then I go back with a heavier hand and really cut through the cardboard. Then just remove the center. Now we're going to cover the edges with paper. I like to use plain white computer paper and I'm just going to cut it into small squares or I mean rectangles. Just cut it into small workable pieces. I like the purple disappearing ones because I can see what I've done. And then we're going to just put it right over the edge. Put it on one side, smooth it out, then crease the corner and go over to the other side, making sure it's nice and smooth. Then continue going all the way around. And I prefer using glue sticks for covering paper because it's not super wet and it won't make your paper all, you know, soggy like craft or school glue will. So glue sticks are like my favorite. I use a lot of them. And my favorite brand of glue stick is Elmer's glue. It just, it for me, it just has always worked really well compared to other brands that I have used. So I usually stick with an Elmer's glue stick. <laughs> Get it? I stick with an Elmer's glue stick? <laughs> oh, I'm so punny. When I get to the corners, I get the paper as close as I can, then I cut a small square or rectangle of paper and then just glue it right there on the edge. Now we have to attach the wall and cover everything in paper. When it comes to paper selection, I like to use scrapbook paper with a lot of printed texture. I love natural prints like bricks or wood grain. I mean, look at these floors. I found these at Michael's. Um, this one was from Michaels and this one's from Hobby Lobby. And I just wait until there's a really good sale, then I go in and I stock up all my paper. Pattern really helps to hide imperfections. So if you're having to glue together more than one piece of paper to cover your whole area, you're gonna see a seam. But by having a lot of pattern, it will help to distract the eyes so people won't see all your different little lines going down your walls. Even when I need it to be like a solid color, it still kind of has a texture. And I find these at Hobby Lobby. Now I do stay away from the prints that have like a vignetting around the outside because you're gonna see that vignetting when you put the second piece of paper next to it. So unless you're gonna use this as like one accent wall, like in the back or something, I usually do not use paper that have like a different hue going around the edge. And generally, I don't use a cardstock type of paper because it can be difficult to maneuver around corners. I prefer a thin scrapbook paper or computer paper and printables from our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com. And printables are awesome because you can print off exactly what you need. I use the paper to connect the extended wall. And you can do this by just laying them side by side with a little bit of a space in the middle, then gluing the paper right on top and that will leave a gap that will allow the cardboard to be folded over to the other side when you're ready to put it away. Or we lay the cardboard onto the side of the cereal box and then glue the paper going over the edge like that. And now it is attached and it can still close up. See, that's like the most important part is that it can close up. So a lot of times when you're applying the paper, you want to apply the paper on the bend uh, if it's going to be a wall that has to be able to move. So like this wall here on the side of the box, we're going to have to make sure we apply the paper on the bend so that we can open the wall up. Then continue covering the rest of the box using a glue stick. When gluing a large piece of paper down, I apply a little bit of glue at a time in like a long row. Apply the paper and then use your hand to just smooth it out. Add some more glue and we're at a corner so I have to bend it and then I just smooth the paper out and go over the edge. Give it a moment to allow the glue on the corner to completely dry, otherwise it might peel up when you try to lay it flat. Then continue gluing on the paper. And we have to cover around the window. So lay the paper on top 
And then I use my finger to rub along the edge and this is going to make an indention in the paper. Can you see that? It's like a really light little line there. And I just cut about a fourth of an inch on the outside of the indention so that when I glue it on, you can still see that white edging all the way around the window. We have extra paper hanging over at the top and we're just gonna fold that over and glue it on the other side. Make small cuts at the corners so you can remove like a little piece there and that will help you to get around the edges. Cover the outside of the box. Cover the bottom of the box with a paper to look like the floor. Wrapping the excess paper over the edge so that it has a nice clean edge. I use a paper cutter to cut strips of paper for the baseboards and around outside the window. Take extra cereal boxes Cut them down the sides, remove the tabs, and lay it to fit in front of the box. It is a little long on this side, so I'm just going to trim that off. Cover it with paper, just as before, to extend the floor. And this floor is fun because we can always just fold it up when we're all done playing and it'll fit inside the box. Everything with these rooms has to be able to fit inside the box, and right now we can just Make sure the floor can fit. See, floor fits, wall can still close. Now the window. We can choose to put the white trim around it and just leave it open. Or we could try to make it look like there's glass by using clear plastic. I get all of my clear plastic by recycling doll packaging. Or from like briar horses. Those are fantastic because they give you huge amounts of clear plastic because the whole front is flat and it's perfect for large windows. However, if you don't have a lot of that laying around, you may have to just downscale the size of your window to fit the size of plastic that you have available. To measure the plastic for the window, you just place the plastic right on top and then use a dry erase marker and draw your line. And you want it to be just a little bit larger than the actual cutout for the window. Cut on the line, then wipe off the marker. To glue the plastic on, I like to use tacky glue because it gives you a little extra time to get the plastic in just the right spot. I applied the glue around the frame of the window and now I'm just going to put the plastic. And while it's drying, use the paper cutter to cut a few thin strips of white paper then glue them over the plastic using a glue stick. Actually, since it's a small window, I decided to do just one. Cut strips of cardboard, measure them to fit the windows, and I want to add a small window sill, so I'm going to cut another small piece of cardboard that will be glued right between this side and this bottom piece here, which now makes me want to cut the very bottom one at an angle, so I want it to look like a trapezoid, so I'm just gonna cut off the corners. Let's cover the cardboard with white paper. So first, we're gonna lay down a little bit of glue. Place the cardboard on the glue, cut around it, cut at the corners. So I'll make a small, and they're slanted cuts. So you make a little cut there. Okay, so it's gonna end up looking like this. And this will give you a really neat finish on your covered Cardboard. Glue the covered pieces onto the window using more tacky glue. To make a small room that is perfect for like a dorm room or a small studio apartment. And these are the basic techniques that we use when making our box rooms. Then we can just decorate it however we like. We can change the wall color, make the windows larger or different shapes. Cover a few layers of paperboard with scrapbook paper to make works of art to cover up any imperfections in the wall. My number one tip is to take your time. And if you don't like something, then change it. And enjoy the process, because crafting is fun. to give a shout out to Kit Kat Crafts. What's up? And just for the record, we used no hot glue in the making of this room. Yay! 
And for a larger doll like an 18 inch, I like to substitute the cereal box for a trifold. Oh, my